I was told once that there are people out there, some close, some far, that think of themselves just as their brain, and that their body is simply there to transport and sustain the brain. To them, the body is almost like a car, detached from the self, not significant. And perhaps this state of becoming a brain self, so to speak, is not entirely without merit. After all, imagine being incredibly intelligent, well-read, knowledgeable, the whole large McDonald's meal of intellectualism. What then is the significance of the body in one's life? Why not adopt a Cartesian split of the mind and body and place our value on our mind? And think of the intellectuals we admire. They usually aren't the bodybuilding type. This is not to say they're super out of shape or whatnot, but the life of the intellectual usually consists of spending their limited time reading. Mishima talks about this reading-centered, nocturnal thinking that he used to follow in his essay, Sun and Steel. I shun the sun and cast my soul into the shadowy pit. How dearly, indeed, I loved my pit, my dusky room, the area of my desk with its piles of books, how I enjoyed introspection, shrouded myself in cogitation. With what rapture did I listen for the rustling of frail insects in the thickets of my nerves? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I just think we should start by recognizing a tendency for some to value the mind at the expense of the body. Also, before anything else, hi, I'm Amy from Amygdala Vids, and you're looking really nice today, I must say. Now we could get into who Yukio Mishima is. Mishima was an author, playwright, poet, and all-around artist. He's definitely controversial, and he's done some very extreme things in his life. He ended his own life at the age of 45. Basically, he got some friends and staged a coup at a Tokyo military base. There he gave this big speech to some people who just weren't buying what he was saying. So he went back inside the base and committed seppuku, which is a Japanese ritual suicide where you basically slice your stomach open while a guy behind you cuts off your head with a katana. So yeah, interesting guy. And this story will come back into play later in the video. But what is this video? I'm assuming you don't subscribe to me for historical biographies. Wait, I guess I shouldn't even assume you're subscribed to me. So if you aren't, feel free to do so. But no, this video looks to examine a philosophical motivation for working out. And what perfect timing too, when it's the new year and people get their Planet Fitness membership that they only really use for a month. Hopefully then, the ideas expressed in this video will help keep you motivated throughout the entire year. And these ideas are not the typical motivations that one might take on to keep working out. You know, like impressing people you're attracted to and all that. Rather, these ideas can sometimes be very abstract. Speaking of which, I'll be reading off of Mishima's essay, Sun and Steel, for these specific ideas. So what are these ideas? Well, let's lay them out first, then go into each one. The first idea is more practical. It's about embracing the pain of working out. The second is abstract, which is the body as a form of expression. And finally, the last one is the Yukio Mishima wild card, which is working out as the preparation for a romantic death. Yeah, I know. Anyway, let's get into it. So I don't know about you guys, but it's sometimes painful when I work out. You know, when you're doing bicep curls or pull-ups and you're approaching the new goal you have, your muscles start to tense up, the thought of stopping starts to seduce you. You make that face. You know what I'm talking about. Well, there's a famous expression out there that says, no pain, no gain. It's during these painful moments that our muscles really start to burn, which can later be recovered to get bigger. I mean, that's how I understand it anyway. But the point is less about the gains, but more about embracing the pain. I've always wondered why working out is so popular in the stoic community, and this may be why. You voluntarily expose yourself to discomfort, but you get through it at the end. It's similar to the cold shower example I gave in this video. You anticipate the discomfort, but assure yourself that you can get through it. Then you actually experience the discomfort and get through it. Here's Mishima talking about the pain involved with working out. As my body acquired muscle and in turn strength, there was gradually born within me a tendency towards the positive acceptance of pain and my interest in physical suffering deepened. Mishima's interest in pain is a little different though, as he believes it to be the sole physical expression of consciousness. There is something very aware about pain, it demands your attention, and it halts your mind wandering away from it. But let's now turn to the next point, the body as a form of expression. 
You know how in the world of dating and flirting, there's a higher value placed on one's personality rather than physical appearance? Well, this is fair for the most part. I mean, after all, what good relationship has been sustained solely based on physical attraction to one another? But should the physical appearance of a person really be irrelevant? Is it really vain or basic to consider someone's looks? Perhaps there's a confusion here, a confusion arising as a result of this Cartesian thinking, this split between the mind and body. Perhaps the body says something about the mind, or in other words, the self, the personality that we were previously discussing. Here's Mishima talking about the self and the body. As I pondered the nature of that I, I was driven to the conclusion that the I in question corresponded precisely with the physical space that I occupied. What I was seeking, in short, was a language of the body. If myself was my dwelling, then my body resembled an orchard that surrounded it. I could either cultivate that orchard to its capacity or leave it for the weeds to run riot in. Now when you think of a person, think of any person, doesn't your mind immediately jump to their physical appearance in some way? Perhaps it's because personality is kind of difficult to visualize in your head, but regardless, Physical appearance is something we connect with a person. Why do you think face reveals are so sought after? We want to attach a physical body to an act or ideas. The body then says something about you in the way you cultivate your orchard. One of these ways is working out, but there are other choices you can make to express yourself in your physical appearance. Clothing is not just worn for its utility to cover you up and keep you warm, but it makes a statement about you. And even if you only care about the utility of clothing, that in itself still says something about who you are. But some may say, perhaps rightly so, that our appearance and our body are out of our control. Mishima addresses this later on. I was free to choose, but the freedom was not as obvious as it might seem. Many people, indeed, go so far as to refer to the orchards of their dwellings as destiny. Now are there examples of our body that sometimes can be out of our control? Absolutely. For example, Maybe you were born with a physical condition, or you lost your leg in an accident and it's now permanently gone. I didn't choose to have a fast metabolism that makes it hard for me to gain weight. That's just what fate dealt me. However, one might ask, should the conversation end there? Even if there are physical aspects about ourselves that are sometimes out of our control, that doesn't mean we can't make changes. I may have been born with a fast metabolism, and perhaps that might bar me from achieving a certain weight, but I could still make progressive steps towards a more ideal weight by eating more. And even if we assume I can't control my weight, I could still change my hair, my clothes, etc. In this sense, the body is like a canvas. There are limitations, like the size of the canvas, but within those limitations, within those boundaries, we are free to express and create and become. Alright, y'all ready for the weird one? Working out as a means to have a romantic death? You know, I don't even feel capable of introducing this one, so I'll just let Mishima talk about it first. I cherished a romantic impulse towards death. Yet at the same time, I required a strictly classical body as its vehicle. A peculiar sense of destiny made me believe that the reason why my romantic impulse towards death remained unfulfilled in reality was the immensely simple fact that I lacked the necessary physical qualifications. A powerful, tragic frame and sculpturesque muscles were indispensable in a romantically noble death. Any confrontation between weak, flabby flesh and death seemed to me absurdly inappropriate. There is a romantic side to Mishima, not in the lovey-dovey romance sense, but in the glorification and fantastical sense. He often talks about the hero and hero worship from time to time, and in fact lived as if he was a hero in his own narrative. Remember how he died? He died with his super fit bodybuilder physique, and in a way that he perhaps saw as romantic. He often talks about how he doesn't want to die of old age, because then he'd be dying not in that romantic noble way that he believes one can achieve only if they have a good physical appearance. I don't really know what else to add on this point. It's weird, sure, but kinda interesting. And I'm definitely not sure what you guys are gonna think about it, so let me know in the comments below. That's gonna do it for this video. I know, I know. I hate to say goodbye too. Don't worry, we'll grab some drinks later. Tell me all about your coworker who irritates you but is also kinda cute. But for now, hit the subscribe, like, and bell button to support the channel. And I wish you all a very beautiful rest of your day.